Everybody, what's up? What's up? What's up? I'm your girl Danny. Um, half of your hosting duple. <laughs> I said duple. Half of your host duo um, for the show Hits and Heels. We want to welcome you back for season four, episode two. I can't believe we're at season four, episode two already. That's crazy, right? Um, and I'm so excited. Um, well, I'm I'm. I'm sad and I'm excited at the same, um, same time. I'm sad because my co-host is sick. So y'all keep uh, Coach Terry in prayer. She is not feeling well today. And truth be told, neither am I. I, ha I was literally in bed all day. But I'm here because I got a special guest tonight. Okay, my no, girl. You period. <laughs> <laughs> now, so I'm going to tell the funny story about your name when we get started. <laughs> And how I was totally confused when I first met you because I was looking for somebody else. But um, welcome to the show, Miss Amani Allure, the coach, the model, the consultant, <laughs> um, the player, the mom. What else am I missing? And I'm, I'm sure I'm missing some other stuff. <laughs> the hairstylist <laughs> in your salon. Okay. <laughs> What else? Well, I know I'm missing some stuff, so just shout it out. Welcome to well, the I show, girl. I have a documentary uh, that I've been working on that I need to go ahead and put out. Hopefully this year um, we can get that oh, on. Excuse me? What? I mean, okay, go ahead. Go ahead. I'm going to let you tell it. Go ahead. <laughs> so you want me to tap in into what? Everything. 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 Tell us who you are. So, okay, so, but wait. Before you say who you are, I have to tell y'all this story about <laughs> how. By my name, everybody. What's your name? Okay, so I was new. I was new to the Gulf Coast Athletic Conference. And I was setting up interviews. We were trying to get some things going for our broadcast network. And I was looking for Coach Raven Fields because that's that's. <laughs> Is Coach Raven Fields. She's at Southern University at New Orleans. I'm looking for the assistant coach, Raven Fields. And I could not find Coach Raven <laughs> anywhere. And something caught my eye one day. And I saw your picture from Media Day at Suno. <laughs> I saw your picture on the GCAC Sports. Uh huh. Instagram feed, and you had commented on a post, and it said the Amani Allure, and I was like, <laughs> "Who is that?" Harpo, I said, "Harpo, who this? Who this? Watch? What's going on here?" <laughs> I was so confused, and I remember I had to ask Alex. I was like, "Alex, who is this?" I said, "What?" Did she change her name? Do I have the wrong name? Like, what is going on? Who is this woman? And she was like, no, that's the assistant coach. And I said, but what is her name? <laughs> Lord. I was like, oh, my gosh, Danny. She was like, that's her. Just, I said, okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and reach out to her. And then I had to stop you because I wasn't following you. We weren't following each other. And I had messaged you from my personal account instead of the GCAC account. I was like, oh, Lord, I didn't mess this whole thing up. But you were gracious. You were gracious. And I remember, as I said, so what is your real name? Right. <laughs> let, let me 
<laughs> Only one I get that a lot. Um, people see, I can tell if someone know me or if they don't. Like if they know if they know me, they know my name is Raven, Raven B. <laughs> but people from the outside in, they know me by money allure. So I understand and I get that a lot. So no problem at all. <laughs> So tell us how you came up with the name Amani Allure. Well, when I started modeling, um, okay, first of all, when y'all get out there modeling, make sure you know what you're doing. You get or you get with somebody who knows something. Cause um, when I started modeling, I got with uh, certain people, and long story short, it was like you can either keep your name or you can change it. And I was like, I never really been in the, been the type to want to change my name. Mm -hmm. And then I kind of got in a phase of my life, like where I'm like, you know what? Maybe I do need to change my name. Maybe that'll help. Um, and I didn't want people to see me as Raven because if you look at me as Raven Fields, you're gonna think about the basketball player. Right. Um, and I wanted everyone to see me as a model. So that's how it came about. So how did you get into modeling? Well. I first started working with Robert Jones. Shout out to him. Um, I think he's from Chicago, but he moved to Columbus. And he was just like, oh, my God, you, um, you're you a definitely a supermodel. Have you ever modeled before? And I'm like, I wanted to model. I always wanted to model. But I tapped into basketball, and then I ended up being kind of good. And then it was like scholarships and all of that. And it kind of just took my life, you know, right. And I wanted to go live because <laughs> I wanted to model. Um, so he was like, you know, you'll be good. Um, I'm a photographer. Um, let's try some shoots and see how you like it. And that's how I started. Um, I started with Robert and then just kept going to different, um, agencies, photographers. I'm not going to say, well, consulting company. I think it was a consulting company. Um, this lady named Tabitha. Um, and then after I got picked up, um, I started working with a marketing company based out of Atlanta. Shout out to Soul Official um, Gang in Atlanta, Georgia, and uh, Model World Casting. Um, I ended up getting a casting director, and then that's when my life really started making a shift, and I started getting seen by agencies. So, okay, so you are from Columbus, Georgia, right? Correct. Okay. So, how? What is it like? going from because you now well i can't even say you live you live in new orleans right mm -hmm. technically yes <laughs> every time i see you you on the road though so no. <laughs> Always I mean, on the what 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 was it like going from columbus to to new orleans <laughs> it, can be, it can be kind of stressful um but i stay focused on the goal and no I have a plan, so I'm like, okay, if I want this to work, I have to make some sac sacrifices. So um, I've kind of slowed down these past couple of weeks. I haven't go been going back and forth, thank God. So I've been able to take a break and I haven't been able to do that in a long time. Um, well, not a full break, because I still have to work out and stuff like that and get prepared for these combines and all that. But as far as like having to do something almost all day until like nine or 10 o'clock at night, so. I've been enjoying this break. But are you really getting a break? Because you're also a hairstylist. So <laughs> so my breaks are, my breaks are, they may not be like days of not doing anything. Even when I say, okay, I'm not going to do nothing today. I'm still researching, looking stuff on my phone, booking appointments, answering emails, uh, answering a phone call from my players. Um, coach she might hey i need you to do this or this recruit so i never really have a break but i do have light days so i consider those light days my break your breaks yeah now you're a licensed cosmetologist or is that right well i went to school um i went to school to take the test so i have my uh, certificate so that's why i just do braids i don't deal with chemicals and stuff like that gotcha so so what made you of all the things that mm -hmm. you added to your plate uh-huh <laughs> <laughs> right what made you add stylus to that well i've been braiding for a minute um actually that was my first passion um we have a school here in columbus georgia it's the only high school that offer cosmetology um 
that's the reason why I went to that school. A lot of people thought, you know, it was kind of confused because honestly, at the time, that wasn't a good school, you know, as for, you know, people around the city didn't feel like it was a good school to play basketball. And I was good at basketball, so it was a risk going to Spencer um, versus going to Kendrick High School, which is um, a team, you know, winning school as far as women basketball. So um, as far as the hair, I've always been into it. The other things start to come into play. Like I, I've always wanted to do hair and I've always wanted to model. And it's two more things I want to do, but I'm not going to speak on that because I never tapped into that. And people were like, um, we didn't know that. But, um, yeah, and then uh, the basketball just came when I went to Girls, Inc., and I started playing on the team, and then it just went from there. Okay, so you, yeah. <laughs> I know, it's a lot. <laughs> so this, is why, this is why I laugh at you when you be like, oh, I need a break. Or I'm taking a break and I'll be like, yeah, right, girl, you ain't. I know, right. <laughs> ain't no breaks with you because you be burning up the highway. I'm glad that, to see that you have uh, set still, at least in Columbus, for the last couple of weeks. So that makes me feel a little bit better. At least you're safe, right? You're sitting yeah, still. For the most part, yes. <laughs> so so let's talk about this, this the basketball basketball career. Okay. And, um, talk talk to us a little bit about where you where you started playing. Like how how old were you when you started playing? Well, I started at twelve, um, so I kind of started a little late. Um, I started at Girls Inc. and then um, once they seen the potential I had, they was like, you know, when I told them I was like, I want to be a model. I don't want to play no basketball. And it was like, well, you're not gonna get no scholarship modeling. And I was like, hmm. So I started thinking. I kept going to the practices. So I was like, okay, maybe I need to do this because I'm in a situation where I need a scholarship um, to, to further my education. Mm -hmm. So I started at Girls Inc. and then I started playing AU. Once I started getting out there to AU and start being seen by different people from different places, it kind of was over. Um, within a year, and this is like no exaggeration, no exaggeration, you can ask anybody who played with me and my coaches. Like within a year, I was one of the top players in the city. In one year, um, I dedicated a lot of time, practicing three or four times a day, making peanut butter jelly sandwiches in the gym, so I won't have to leave the gym or get no food. Um, I had great coaches. Some are not with me. Um, unfortunately, they passed away, but they were um, great coaches and made sure that they dedicated all that time to ensure that I got the proper training and just life skills, all that type of stuff. Took me home, fed me sometimes, all that, all that good stuff. So shout out to them. All my coaches love y'all. Without y'all, there would definitely not be a Ravenfields. Um, so, yeah, that's how the basketball thing. And honestly, after that, um, gaining all the exposure, I started getting um, looks from D1 schools. Pat Sum even came to one of my games when I was playing uh, for AU, which was very dope. If anybody knows about Pat Summer, she, you know, she's no longer here as well, but a phenomenal coach um and i was getting letters from vanderbilt like all type of d1 colleges so that's when i knew like okay i gotta do something with this yeah so what what is your so you're playing semi-pro ball now where where are you playing what's the name of your team when does your season start all, of, all that good stuff okay well i play for a, a pro-am uh league um and our team name is bands um, it's the ABL League um, that's located in Atlanta, Georgia. A lot of um, bands, B A N D Z, huh? bands. Yeah, bands, B A N S. I think oh. it's creation for something. Um, and the league is AEBL, and it's in Atlanta, Georgia. It's a very popular uh, league. The men league has been going for like a long time. Um, we got like Joe Johnson and a lot of NBA players that play in that league and men that play overseas. Um, they started the women team not too long ago. You know, the women kind of, we start in kind of late, um, but it is in motion, thank God. And um, some of the WNBA players play in that as well and overseas. So it's a very competitive league. And so what brought you to to playing in that league? Were you how does that how does that work? Do you just do you sign up? Are you drafted? Um, What's the process to play in that the, league? Oh well, I actually got chosen on um, this year. 
but they do have a tryout. So they either, some teams, they have the people they already know they want. And then sometimes coaches want to, you know, pick up other players. So they have tryouts and then they'll um, pick you up like that. Okay. So now you are also a, a coach. You're the um, women's basketball assistant coach at Southern University at New Orleans. And then during your off season, and I say off season very lightly because you <laughs> do not have an off season. I just, I want people to understand what you like. They really don't. Matter of fact, can we just, let's, let's, <laughs> let's talk about it just for a quick second. Yes. Let's, let's dive into this because I need people to understand that it's not, you know, I have a different aspect of it, right? I get to see, I get to see a close up. I get to see it first right. opinion. and I don't have kids, right? So when I see y'all out here with kids doing all of this, and I just be like, "Child, <laughs> I'll be forgetting to eat lunch, and I couldn't have kids." Listen, I would literally have to take my child to everything with me, or I'd be in trouble. So <laughs> talk about. Let's 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 dive into that because I think that a lot of people think that it's just and not to say that it's not fun, but it takes an extra level of balance, right? Because your son is eleven. He look eleven. He's eight. <laughs> he does look eleven. Okay, because I'll be forgetting like you six twelve, your son like five thirteen. I know. <laughs> Shout out to Zaire. That's big Zaire. Zaire. That's my boy, though. I love me some Zaire. He big, though. It's a big boy. He a big boy. Yes. yes. He's a big boy. He's sweet, though. But <laughs> So talk about that. Talk about what it's like to, to have to, to balance that as a mom and a coach and also a player. Like, what do summers look like for you when you're – playing in the league you know is he is he there is he with family and how do you how do you balance that because you moved to new orleans with no family but i mean well i know that you have family down there but you didn't know many of them before you moved so you really had to pack up your whole life and family and move to a foreign land <laughs> and just go. thank god um honestly and just wanted a better better life Mm -hmm. Um, and I feel like going to Suno and still to this day, I feel like it was a great decision. Um, but to, to answer your question about the balance part, um, honestly, God, because if you don't have God, you're not going to have no type of balance in your life. Your life is going to be like a roller coaster. You're going to be constantly up and down. Right. And in order to kind of smooth it out when you're up and down, you have to have God in your life. Um, friends and family, they will be there for certain things, but you can't depend on them, you know, for certain situations. You only can rely on yourself and God because sometimes they're not going to understand what you're right. going to understand your vision, understand the sacrifice that you have to take. They won't understand until it actually happened. Then like, oh, dang, now I see why, or this is why she felt so strongly or, oh, that's why she wanted to be, be in the gym. Like they'll understand certain things, um, a lot better. Um, because sometimes they see you as the person and they don't understand that, okay, I, I'm, I'm a model, I'm a, a coach, I'm a, you know, and I have different things that I have to do in order to maintain that. It's one thing to be it, but, but to maintain it, you know, I've been doing hair, you know, for a minute, I've been playing basketball for a minute, I've been modeling for a minute. I just started coaching. That's the newest thing. Um, but I've been surrounded around coaches and that's why I was e easy. I'm not gonna say it was easy, but yeah. it it did become easier for me um, my first year because of the experience that I had with so many great coaches. So saying all that to say, people, listen to me. When you have a friend, family member, auntie, grandma, I don't care who it is. If they are like, if they're dedicating their time to something or some things, and sometimes they just like, you know, sometimes I'd be wanting space or sometimes I don't want to answer the phone, you know, cause I'm just so used to talking to people, making decisions, figuring out this and that. And sometimes people, you know, they kind of get mad and be like, you know, what about me? And it's like, what about me? Like, you can come help me do certain, some of these, I have a lot of things going on. You can come help me sometimes. And then we can, you know, experience things together like that. But 
sometimes it can be difficult when you're already have you have so much going on you're trying to balance and then you have you know your family and friends they kind of like demand certain attention is like it's not going to be there yeah and so how do you balance those demands and how do you balance actually you know well, tell, telling people no um sometimes just being honest <laughs> depending on how close our relationship i just tell you no like i'm a very you know outspoken person and i would want somebody to do the same i won't want you to pretend like you know you're not, you want to talk to me and you really don't because i would rather you have that space and you just say you know what raven i don't really want to talk right now i'm in a bad mood you know when i want to talk i hit you up so for the people who understand me and i know that they can handle it i'll let them know like look today ain't the day you know i need some time to do x y and z yeah. and then for the people who can't handle it honestly I, sometimes i just won't answer the phone or and i just don't feel bad about it because when you have a close relationship with a guy and you know that your heart is in the right direction, your intentions are pure it don't bother you now if you're doing something wrong it's going to bother you but if you know like i'm just really tired i'm mentally drained i don't have it right now yeah I'm Force it, and that's how I. I guess that's why I still like I'm in high school. <laughs> right, you sure do. <laughs> Out here looking twelve. I know. <laughs> Everybody that's in high school is like, oh my god, Ray, we have not changed. I'm like, I know. Maybe it'll come soon. That's all right. <laughs> it's cool. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> so. So you have gone from playing. Oh, I, let me go back to my other question. Okay. What are summers like for you? Okay. With you, with you playing, mm -hmm. but and when I ask this, I, I'm asking it because I also know you're still coaching, which also means you're recruiting. Right. Which also means while you're playing i could be recruiting <laughs> you could be recruiting right so again and i know i keep asking about balance and and how you how you deal with all that but i think it's important for people to understand especially young women young black women who are interested in playing or coaching or getting involved in athletics and for us to share with them the experiences not to discourage them from living their dreams but so that they have a health, healthy understanding of what it's really really like to do all these things but also understanding that you you really can live your dreams like you don't have to put anything to the side but it does take support and for you to know yourself and what you need as a person and when it's time for me to be like okay you know what um my bad y'all um because i know i have to know that for myself right so when i start getting like irritated and feeling like i'm gonna snap on somebody be on conference calls looking crazy and all of that I'd be like okay you know what i may send a text to to kelly and dr barnes to be like i'm tapping out for today i i just need i need I need today off or I just need a few hours or just maybe maybe it's two hours. I just need to right like take a walk, breathe, go, right. you know, <laughs> go to my daddy's garden and pick some veggies. It's like I need to do something that doesn't relate to what I do on a daily basis. So like how does that how does that work for you for you? How do you and I know that you you went over some of that, but I think you know people don't may not realize what it means to be an assistant coach where a lot of assistant coaches are actually kind of heading up the recruiting process for their yeah. team so how do you how do you operate in that how do you work that out and and again not just find your balance but also be able to separate the coach from the mom from the player and you know give each one of the things that you do the appropriate time without burning yourself out? Well, well, as far as the balance, um, I try to make it make sense and kind of put it where it can be a trickle-down effect. So, for example, with the coaching, 
I'm coaching and playing. So I use that. I'm like, okay, how can I use the um, the two to make one? So mm-hmm. while I'm playing, I'm recruiting. Uh, for example, uh, we went to a pro combine uh, last weekend. One of the players, I told her about it. Um, we're recruiting her, and she, you know, applied. Yeah. That, um, and she's from uh, France. Um, and I felt like this would be a great experience for her. So not only was, you know, not only am I playing, but I have my player playing. So I'm watching her play, you know, um, someone who's new, who's coming in so I can see how she play against pros um, and mm-hmm. see how, you know, certain things that she may need to work on. So basically I try to make two into one, even with the modeling. I tie in the modeling with with the basketball. Um, with photo shoots, it's kind of like you can you can schedule your own your own um, your own photo shoots. So even with the hair, you can you can schedule your own hair appointments. You can choose. Yeah, I can do it. No, I can't do it. So the more flexibility you have in certain things, the more you can do more things. Now, when you're entering things that are restricted, you enter four like you trying to do four things, and all of them like not very flexible, that's going to be hard. So I think my balance come in because I have things that are flexible and understand my life because I'm really at a point now, like you have to either, under, you got to understand my life, my flexibility and how I want to move, or I'm not going to participate. That's anything. Right. That's in um, my, my career, my friends, family relationships. Like it's like, I'm, my mind is already set now. I've been through yeah. the, Trying this, maybe this will work. Let me no. Now I know exactly what I want to do. So the balance is making sure that there are things that are flexible and you can tie them in together. That way you can kind of do a two in one. Um and make sure that it's something that you love because if it's not something that you love to do, you're not going to have that energy. So then you're not going to have that passion. And then you're not going to continue to be able to do what you want to do because if you lose the passion, then you might lose the talent. So that's how I keep my balance. And then just having good people in my life. Like I do have some great supporters. You're one of them. Um, definitely a blessing. And I'm not just saying that like to have genuine people in my life um, to help me, you know, keep pushing in, in God. So I'll keep my balance. And I think it's even more important when you have kids, right? Huh? Uh-oh. I lost you for a second. What were you saying? About the sun. Playing. My son, he does go to the game a lot. So Zaire has seen his mother play a lot of times. He's um, experienced some basketball moments of his own already. He thinks he's a coach. He'd be writing up plays and stuff. And when we used to lose, <laughs> why we lose? Why y'all lose? Why they didn't do this? So he'd be talking about one of the players like, she should have did this. You got to tell her to do that. And when they get to practice, you got to run them. <laughs> oh, my God. So my bad. <laughs> it's good. So I'm looking at him, I'm like, and I told you, uh, two of my coaches passed away, and it made me think about him, about, well, about both of them. And I'm like, he acting like my coaches. <laughs> so funny. But, but I feel like, feel like kids, you know, that's why I was going to say it's so important to have the right people around you and have the right influences and for your kids to see you balancing your own life with them involved, right? Because they're sponges. They're yeah. going to pick up on those things. And they're also going to pick up on bad habits. Right. <laughs> um, but when you instill in them good habits, then they pick up on those good habits as well. Right. Now, right. granted, they're still kids. Right. They they're going to be some knuckleheads like all of us were. Most, right? <laughs> most definitely. <Jesus. laughs> I love them. But yeah. <laughs> but I think that when there's that balance. And I keep, I know I keep driving home that word, but when when you're able to show them how things work together, how they can work together, and the importance of, you know, saying, like, look, son, I've got this, that, and third going on, and all you have is school. Right. You you know what I'm saying? Like, why can't you, why can't you handle your business in the classroom? Thank you. So, <laughs> You can't handle your business in the classroom, then you won't be able to do X, Y, and Z later on. So I think laying the foundation and having them see 
how you operate and how you are able to keep a level head and things like that, but still be a real human, right? They need to see you as a real human. Like, yeah, she's superwoman, but That's somehow idea. she got to take that cape off, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> you know? Yep. So um, kudos to you for that because, whew, Chad, listen. <laughs> thanks, thanks. <laughs> so when does when does um Bayon's season start? July first. July first. July first. I'm ready. And how many games do y'all average a week? Um, I think it's I think it's one game a week. It's a short okay. season. Um, I think it ends in August. Okay. Um, and like I said, it's a very competitive league. Some uh, players get training day contracts to go to the WNBA. Some people go overseas. Oh, wow. So definitely, like, the best of the best. Like, Fly J, um, you know, the girl from LSU, yeah. they have different age groups. Her age group, she played in it. So, like, the best of the best come and fly in. So, Oh, wow. Those, those leagues. <laughs> wow, that's awesome. And what's it like being able to experience experience playing with professional athletes like WNBA athletes? Because I know Simone Augustus has been on y'all's campus and at a couple of y'all's games. So, you know, I know me, like I still be like starstruck when I see. <laughs> well, when Simone came to our game, I was kind of starstruck. I was on the bench and one of the players was like, Coach, that's Simone Augustus. And I looked and I was like, that is her. I'm like, well, she came to the game. And then I found out that Jordan, who's on our team, her dad is like a big uh, basketball fanatic. And he knew her mother, got her to okay. come. So that was dope. Um, shout out to Jordan and her family for that. Um, so, but as far as playing against them, because I've, I've been to like invite only, they do have like open runs for people um, that play overseas and WNBA players, just so we can make sure that the, uh, the um, skill level, you know, Want to make sure that it stays competitive. Um, when I was going to those, uh, like it made me realize, like I still got more in the tank. Like yeah, and against them, they're very you know physical. Um, a lot of in shape. So if you're not in shape, you're it's gonna be hard. You're gonna be looking crazy out there if you're not in shape. Um, then playing against people who are taller than me because everybody just think I'm so tall and big. I'm like y'all, I'm and you are tall. I am, but. Compared to six seven and six eight, I look like a midget. So <laughs> no, I look like a midget. Yeah, you look like a midget. <laughs> I look like a medium sized midget. But uh, you know, playing <laughs> people who play um on a competitive level, you know, every year, it definitely is a blessing to be able to even do that, so that I can see where I'm at as far as talent wise. Um, I even you know, built some relationships with some of the WNBA players. Um, shout out to Shaka Parker um, for Atlanta Dream. She's a very humble, like, I love Cheyenne. And she's, I got to make sure she see this. But um, I really like Cheyenne because she's a great basketball player. She's also a mother as well. Um, she had her baby, went overseas, came back. And now, like, she played against the Aces, which has a... Um, a super team right now with Candace Park and all them. She uh, was the most valuable player that game. So um, she's just a sweet person. She's very genuine. Like you could tell she's all about her family, basketball and motivating young women. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. The relationships and the, and the skill, seeing the skill set and be, being able to compete were, are the great, great things I got from that. And how do you motivate other young women what is your what are you as you're coaching and as you're meeting other young women um through playing and even doing hair what is your what is that one thing that you feel like no matter where you are and what you're doing you have to pour into another young woman to keep going i know that people are watching you know um even on my instagram i'm noticing a lot of uh, young players are starting to follow me, models, um, people who knew me from when I used to stay with, well, stay in the hood. My mom still stay there. <laughs> but, um, you know, just being honest from my childhood where I, where I grew up. Um, mm -hmm. 
just from all different walks of life, different agencies, um, even people like you, administrators um, in different areas. So I, I know not only just young people, I know a lot of people kind of look like, if I were to just say, you know what, I'm done with everything. <laughs> I know a lot of years be like, hold on, wait, what's going on? I know what fix yeah. them. So to know that, um, just to keep going and to make, when I, when I can be accessible, to make sure that I am there. Um, I know I'm not God. I can't be there every minute of the hour, but when I am there, I make sure it's worth it. Yeah. Now, in terms of, um, okay, so we've talked about your playing, we've talked about your coaching, talked about your son. We, what else about Amani are we missing? Like, if you if 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 you said this is who I am. What, what would what would be three words to describe who you are? Mm, I can be sensitive. <laughs> Man, I seem like it, but I can be sensitive. Um, what else that people don't know? I have a lot of deep thoughts. Like I think about a lot of things. Mm -hmm. mm, some things I don't like other people. Well, I ain't gonna say other people, but not as many people may think about. Um, and one more. Uh, oh, <laughs> this is gonna be kind of um, Like two years ago, I don't know what, what phase I was in, but <laughs> I used to listen to uh, rap beats. And I used to write rap. <laughs> I got like 40, I'm not kidding. And like in my notes on my phone, I got like about 40, 40 raps. I don't know how many of them are good, <laughs> but <you> know, <laughs> I guess in that time I wanted to like express myself and I didn't want to do poetry. So, mm. hmm. so those three things that people really don't know about me for real. Okay. And Okay, so I have a few more questions. I'm going to go back to go, go back to basketball. <laughs> Do you have any pre-game rituals? Mm. Either as a coach or player or both. And this may be something that even your team does, you know, but any 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 pre-game pre-game rituals that y'all have. Well, as the coach, I like to um when the girls are warming up, they're doing layups. I like to kind of pretend like I'm playing defense on them to kind of get them warmed up because I want them to go ahead and get in game situation. Because you know what you do? You start warming up, you do layups, you don't have any contact on you. Right. So, and then when you game, it's like, oh, it's contact. And then now you have to adjust. So, as far as getting them game ready, I try to do certain things. Um, even if they have the ball and they're um, triple threat and they're trying to move the ball, I try, kind of – try to swipe at it, try to take the ball, kind of get physical with them. Um, I don't really have anything like listening to music or anything like that. That's my thing as far as with the coach. Now, as far as playing, mm -hmm. it, depend it depends on who I'm playing, honestly. If it's like a serious game, I know I need to like really lock in, lock in. Like, I don't like to talk that much. Mm. Because I feel like I can get um, distracted very easily and then lose focus on what I need to worry about. So I kind of just don't want to talk and kind of just lock in on what I need to do. And then sometimes I do like to listen to music. Like if it's a game where I feel like it's going to be hostile, <laughs> I like to listen to music um, to kind of level out that energy. And what kind of music do you listen to? Hip hop. I love rap. <laughs> I do listen to gospel. I have my moments. And I just need that good, that good healing. Um, <laughs> I'm not here and say I just listen to. I don't, um, but I do have my moments where I just need to listen to gospel. But I like um, rap. A lot of times I listen to Nicki Minaj. <laughs> um, I like Young Dolph, um, Money Bag. Mm, that's pretty much my go-to. These are all people that I have no, no idea who these people are <laughs> at all. So the funny thing is my assistant, um, well, she's our admin assistant, Deja. I, it was one of the first trips that uh, she drove with me 
And um, it may be, I think it was basketball, actually. You know, I had a car full of kids, you know, a car full of interns, plus Deja and Alex, oh, my <laughs> <my> assistant. <laughs> and um, so there's one song that I just love. And actually, I played it the first time we were we were traveling. It was for cross country. They had just met me, right? So when everybody meets me, they're like, oh, she's so nice, she's so sweet, she's yeah. so sweet that she's so quiet. And yeah, and I got in that car. I was like, you know, I'm just like, I'm just, you know, like I'm feeling some type of way. I don't know what was going on with me that day. And I was like, Can I play this song, y'all? They were like, sure, what you gonna play? And then I turned <laughs> on, I don't even remember his name. Um it's yo something, right? And uh -huh. it's like the song is, I just looked at my wrist, I got time today, right? And I started playing that song. They were like, <laughs> that was like Miss Danny? Like Danny was that's money bag. Like, money, yep, yeah, money bag yo. Yeah, that's my dog. I turned on money <laughs> bag yo and I played that song. They were like, oh my God, like what where did this come from? And I said, let me tell y'all something. Every now and then. You got to tap into it. I got that one good ratchet song that I play. <laughs> right. <laughs> but then Deja got me listening to, uh, oh, Lord, it's one of them babies. Uh, one of them babies. It ain't baby from Cash Money. I know that. One of the mother babies. <laughs> little baby, the baby. Little baby. There you go. Little baby. Okay. So she got me listening to him. So we spent the whole trip listening. She was like, I'm going to let you listen to him. And I was like, but I mean, his lyrics, you know, they raw, of course, because, yeah. he, you know, he's one of them hardcore rappers or whatever. But um, his music does have a, a decent message to it most of the time. But yeah, that's my, that's my, that's my, that's, that's kind of my go to on road trips now yeah. is Lil Baby. <laughs> Okay. She got me hooked. So Deja, if you see this, um, I tell her I'm blaming you. Ah. Uh, okay. This selection, though, she gave me a good selection. <laughs> um. So yeah, I think um, I'm a music lover anyway, and so I used to I used to go to sleep, and that would be the one thing that even now calms me down, helps me recenter and refocus. Um, is music. I don't have to talk to anybody. Y'all can go. Y'all can go sit down somewhere else. I ain't gotta talk to. You. <laughs> I'm in my own world. Yeah. I don't have to talk to you. You and me ain't gotta look at each other. We could be in the same room, right, okay. and not not say a word. And be totally. Totally. Yep. Um. And so it is nice to hear that there's someone else that. <laughs> look, that feels good. Man. You ain't alone. I said because I think, but I do think that's important too. Like you have to learn how to, um, you have to know what you need. And you've said that several times during tonight's show is that you know what you need and finding mm -hmm. balance is about knowing what exactly you need. And there you go. What you, what, you, <laughs> what you, what you love to do focusing on what you love to do and balancing that with what you need as a person, what you need to do to continue doing the things you love, but also not take away from who you are. Right. Um, and so um, I think that, you know, and it's, I feel like even especially as, as Black women in sports, right? Mm -hmm. Like, it's already hard enough, right? <laughs> and so when you get into this industry, when you get into athletics as a black woman, and if you don't know who you are, they'll try to eat you alive. It will not even try. It will because you, you are being tossed and turned and swayed and pulled and pushed in a whole bunch of different directions and you lose, you don't know who you are. So you have no sense of self. And so then you become what everybody else says you should be, wants you to do, and 
you're going to the places that other people need you. And so you're constantly pouring into someone else's idea of who you are and who you should be rather than living for who you know you are and need to be. Can I say it better myself? <laughs> Perfect. It's, but I mean, it's it's easy to say, but a lot of people cannot do it. They cannot, and that's yeah. why. You know, that's why some people, certain people, are like, well, I felt like this person supposed to be like here. Why they not here yet? Or this is because they don't know how to tell. No, or, they don't. I have to do this, or this is what I need, and I'm and I'm sticking beside me and my thoughts and my mind and me and God plan. Yeah. And I I def I feel like I definitely struggled with that. Like when I first started, I felt like I had to do everything to prove that I was valuable. Why? And, hmm. Why? Um, because I was new in the industry. Gotcha. You know, so when I was 20 something in entering this industry, I really thought that like I just had to say yes. You know, um, back when I was coming up, it really was a point where everybody was like, you got to pay your dues. You got to pay your dues. And it was like, I got to eat, too. Like, I, what you, are my dues paid yet? Right. <laughs> What's the balance on this account? Because. Uh, do y'all got left? Yeah. Like, I'm, I'm tired. I'm, you know. That is. Though. But that, with the modeling, I used to do so much stuff for free. Mm -mm. Then I started seeing people was being ungrateful. And I'm like, you not know, I don't have to do this. You know, you came to me, ask me. I didn't come to you. You know, so I definitely feel you, and I, I know you're a sweet person. So I can see how that may have happened, but I'm glad. You know, this is this is change of you had a sense of direction, and you know how to say no now, or do you? I, I do. I okay. do. And, and most of the time, my no is disappearing. Right. <laughs> hey. So. Listen, I will check out. Like, I, um, at one point, um, I don't know when, I think it was, it may have been last year. Um, like, when I first started. And also during basketball. Now, during the basketball tournament, I was waking up to, like, anywhere from 20 to 40 new text messages every morning during our basketball championship, plus the emails. And so I decided, well, nobody gonna have that much access to me. Man, you just said something. Woo! And so I really, after <laughs> basketball, for real, I decided to really switch the way I was doing things. You know, I, I have a business phone and so I decided to move contacts that were contacting me for business to my business phone. Gotcha. And there's some of y'all like you, you have my personal cell phone number. And there are other people that will never in their <laughs> life get my personal cell phone number. You will you will never have it. Well, I'm glad I made the list. I feel special. You this, baby. You you said some people that will never. I feel you, man. I feel you because you gotta protect that peace, man. You have to protect your peace, but you also, <laughs> for me, it's about shutting down. Like I need to be able to shut things down, and that was something that I really struggled with when I mean, and for a very long time. Like I'm a workaholic by nature. Like I like to work, and so being in athletics, I love this. Right. So I, I could, I. I may I, I could get off the podcast tonight, get off this show and go find something to do. Now right. I won't. Right. Right? Because I've I know the value of shutting it down. That work's gonna be there tomorrow. I promise you. And unless there's a due date for tomorrow, right? I'm, I'm a morning person anyway. So a lot of times, even if there is a due date, I'm taking my behind the bed. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm the type, I wake up at 4.35 in the morning and finish what I got to do. Now, it just means that by noon, sister girl's ready for a nap. Right. Because right? I don't work the full day already. 
<laughs> but one thing I've learned is I ain't finna let you bother me. You're not gonna bother me. <laughs> and look, if people care about you, they're gonna understand. Yeah. I had to learn. I had some people I thought that I thought they just cared about me so much. And they, they were stressing me out, they didn't even know it. Like it's one of my friends. I love her today. Oh God, no, I love her to this day. <laughs> A child love me everything, and she know who she know who I'm talking about. She probably ain't gonna watch it because she don't be on Facebook and stuff. But she will worry me, and I had to learn. Stop answering the phone every time. Stop running to help her every mm -hmm. time. Taking her everywhere. Stop doing every every time she needs something. Stop fleeing to her rescue because she gonna be so dependent on it. And then the time I say no, she gonna forget all the time I said yes. And that's when I was like, look. Mm -mm. No, so we're still friends. I still love her, but you no, know, not to, when I when I made my little my little motion. You know, mess with me. Mm -mm. Listen, and distance makes the heart grow fine. So uh, <laughs> you gonna have to miss me. <laughs> oh Lord, I you didn't know he actually really. It's almost what like, we got eight more minutes for an hour. Yeah, we talk. <laughs> About so much within the hour because it's like an hour, but time really be flying by. It does fly by. It does fly by because the last time I looked at the clock, it was eight thirty one. I was like, right. "Hey, it was eight fifty three. Right. <laughs> but Terry and I talk about this all the time that like our hour, our shows usually go by really fast because you know I, I think one thing that I absolutely love about our shows is that we just get on here and we just literally just have conversations. Like, right. It's just like a phone call or, you know what I'm saying? Like we sitting down having having lunch or something. Right. You know, I like, you know, I like to eat, girl. Right. Yeah. <laughs> but me too. <laughs> well, Tim Crabs. Hey, here. Did you get the email I sent you from King Crab? <laughs> oh, my God. You sent me an email. <laughs> I'm done. I was like, I'm not going to make it before this expires. Here you go. <laughs> <laughs> no folks i love king crabs listen every time somebody say oh i want to go somewhere and eat when they um in new orleans i got somewhere that's <laughs> showing up what you told me to i got somewhere i got two places which one right you? yeah those oh and peewee crab shack shout out to peewee yeah. crab but um so i i just you know i appreciate you taking time out today tonight to to hop on with us and <clears throat> excuse me um just chat about your experience i think that your story um and especially stories of one thing that terry and i have always said is that um too many times women especially black women we feel like our time is up or we can't live our dreams or whatever because we we meet adversity and because we don't hear the stories of other black women who are overcoming adversity right we think that we're in it alone and we're not we got a whole group a whole sisterhood don't that even can, and, and that can help us along the way and we don't know it and so our goal with this show is to connect people and a lot of our guests are also men as well but we need advocates we need allies right. and we need men that understand that okay this this woman is out here doing her thing how can i support her what can i pour into her what does she need how can i how can i assist her but hopefully the women that are watching this show also feel like they've got an outlet they have a safe space to come and learn right. um safe space to come and hear other stories and also a safe space to to connect um you know privately if need be you know we do have um an email address for you all if you need to get in contact with us it's hello at hits and heels .com. and if you are interested in being on the show if you know someone that we should have on the show you have questions about working in athletics coaching um Terry and I have those connections that we would love to um, assist you with building those relationships within athletics. So, um, Raven. <laughs> so you, you don't have to call me a money no more. Look. Listen, 
I can't call you a money no more because I was already confused <laughs> when we met. And ever since then, I have been calling calling you Raven. Right. You know that. I call you Raven all the time. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, thank you for tonight. Thank you for thank you. time out for, for and for sharing your story and for being very open and, and vulnerable to talk about the challenges that you faced. And also offering your input and advice and encouragement on the importance of finding balance, but most importantly, knowing who you are. So um, how can how can the people get in touch with you? How well, let me say this. <laughs> how, can, how, can follow, how can they follow you? Okay. Because what we're not gonna do is hound her. <laughs> We already talked about it. Raven to disappear. She gonna she gonna cut you off. <laughs> it ain't no secret either. You ask other people, they be like, "Yeah, she ain't lying." My own mama tell you. Listen, cause I was looking for you on Facebook. I said, "Oh Lord, my friend is gone. Where she go?" Oh, when I deact, Ooh, baby. Mm. Yeah, that was a little text there. But yeah, y'all can follow me on IG at the Amani Allure on Twitter, Amani Allure, and then Facebook, Amani Allure. So y'all make sure y'all follow me. I will follow back. Um, can I leave the people with something before we get off? Yeah, yes. Please do. Trust the process. And don't overlook the things that are that are here to help you. Like it might be things that you're used to seeing on a everyday basis and you're not realizing that 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 what you're looking at that you're overlooking is going to help you get to where you're going because sometimes we're looking all over the place and lately i haven't been looking i just been you know sitting back and things have been coming to me like we didn't get to talk about it but that'll be another time but the record part you know Get, getting emails and say, hey, you've been selected out of such such. Oh, such no, we, we need to talk about that. <laughs> Real quick, y'all. It's going to be in Harlem, New York. Uh, this will be a HBCU all-star classic. I will be representing um, Winston-Salem State University, but I also told them that I am an assistant coach. They didn't know that. And I was like, you know, I have to represent Suno as well because that's the HBCU. So I will be representing two schools. Um, and like I said, we'll be in Harlem, New York. Uh, we'll be celebrating the uh, 50th anniversary for hip hop. And if you know about music, you know, hip hop originated from New York. So that's why they're having the classic there in New York. And Rutgers Park is a park where a lot of legends have played, Kobe, um, mm -hmm. Katie, a lot of NBA players, like I said, legends have played on this uh, park, at this park. So I'm definitely looking forward to it. I've been training for it. Um, it will be a lot of people in attendance from different schools, cheerleaders, bands. So, um, I feel like it's going to be a great experience and a lot of culture for black people and just recognizing black people within, within itself. So shout out to Daryl Brooks and Rachel. I don't let, know Rachel last name, but sorry, Daryl, shout out to them. They're, they are the people who are organizing this great event. Whew. Well, listen, thank you again. I'm so thank excited. You. I'm still trying to make my way up to Rucker Park. Please. Uh, oh, yeah, we oh, need to yeah, we need to yeah, yeah. Yes. So you can, you got to call me after. I got you. Um, so we can chat. Yes. Um, but congratulations on everything from the modeling to the motherhood to coaching to playing to representing suno and winston like they say winston salem <laughs> <laughs> oh my god <laughs> winston salem <laughs> yeah it's so country oh my god. <laughs> um but shout out to um to repping hbcus you know that's that's my love that's why i don't feel like i'll ever leave um the hbcu network i'm i'm back in it and loving it and i'm excited to be back but um congratulations to you thank you again for joining us thank and you. remember make sure that you follow amani miss raven on instagram at the amani Lore. huh 
I see, I see you with the Instagram. You got my little Instagram right there. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, you know, I gotta hook it up. Gotta hook it up. Um, but she has all of her modeling, her playing, her coaching, um, um, her hair, all of that is all on Instagram. So make sure that you hit her up on Instagram and um, follow her from there. Um, thank you again for joining us tonight. This has been season four, episode two of Hits and Heels. And don't forget, we are trying to get our subscribers up on YouTube. So make sure that you head over to YouTube right now. If you are not watching on YouTube or you don't watch the replays on YouTube, make sure that you still head over there and subscribe to our YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash at sign hits and heels. We are live every Wednesday at 9 p.m. Eastern time until the fall when football starts. Then we will move back to Tuesday evenings. Okay. And 9 p.m. So um, make sure that you stay connected with us. And remember, if you are someone that you know is interested in being a guest on our show, please reach out to us at hits and he hello at hits and heels dot com. Again, hello at hits and heels dot com. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and make sure that you stay connected. We've got three amazing seasons that y'all can go back. And instead of watching Real Housewives and all of that, Watch Hits and Heels. We got three good seasons that y'all can binge watch on. Okay. Three. We got like 35 episodes right now. Somewhere along there. So, y'all, I mean, that's, that's, come on now. We definitely get new subscribers up. Yeah, we got to get this subscribers, subscribers up. So, make sure that you tell a friend to tell a friend. Ain't that what the rap song say? Tell a friend to tell a friend. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> I got you. All right, y'all. So thank you again for joining us. We are out of here. We will see you next Wednesday, June 21st, same time, same bad channel, 9 p.m. Eastern time, right here on Hits and Heels. Peace. Peace. We're out.